Sorry, Henry, it's impossible to follow what you do. This was uh, the opening statement from Stefan from Sweden that is a long time subscriber of the channel uh, while watching the video that I did about the FCC mod from Drone Tweaks. He's saying the description uh, how to obtain the needed apps is told very fast and details are lost and not present. And that is true because I actually just referred to the website uh, for doing that part of uh, the operation. So I will try to make up for that during this video. Further, he's saying that uh, the whole process of actually switching the drone into FCC mode is also not clear. I might assume wrongfully that uh, you know a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about. I will cover that uh, more in details in a separate video. But the purpose of this one is to show you how you retrieve the UUID, which is one of the things that are necessary for you to get this uh, application for your iOS device. So why is a UUID even required? That is because you are going to install an application that's not available through the App Store. And to be able to do that and to be able to run it on your iOS device, you need the app to be signed with a valid uh, developer certificate. And this is what Drone Tricks can actually help you do. This is done by uh, them adding your unique identifier to their Apple developer account and thereby signing the app, allowing it to run on your device. So let's see if I can explain the process so it's easy to follow along. So if you go in on, I think it's easier for you to do it directly on your phone. So if you're going to the Drone Tweaks website, you will see the first thing that you need to do is you need to select what drone that you're going to use it for. And in this case, we are selecting the Mini 3 Pro. Just for an example, I could have chosen any of the other ones as uh, this uh, FCC mod is supporting a wide range of drones, including the ones using uh, the DJI RC and RC2. And uh, you can see here there are two mods available. There's one for iOS and there's one for Android. And uh, you don't need to do this if you're running an Android device. So uh, this is exclusively reserved for the iOS people. So if we just select that, we will get into a, yeah, where you can sort of purchase uh, this mod. And there's of course a link in the description uh, below in case that you wanna do this by yourself. To get this going, you need to go under the three dots or the three burger bars in the upper right corner of the menu. And then you need to take the point that's getting the UUID. And when you're on this page, there's actually quite a good description of uh, how the process is done. I will just show you what it looks like when you are performing it, so you know exactly what to do. So the first step that you need to do is open one of the tools below in the Safari on your iOS device for an automatic UUID finder. And because I'm actually default using uh, Google's uh, yeah, Chrome browser, so I basically need to copy the link and go to Safari and paste it in there. So I highlight the link and I press copy link. Then I will go out to the main screen of uh, the phone and then I will find Safari. I will launch that and then I will paste in the website that I just copied or the tool that I just copied. And make sure that you don't use private mode on Safari to do this. Then uh, press the little AAA here in the corner of the search bar and then press website settings and make sure that request desktop website is turned off. Then we press done, then refresh the page, and then you press get the UUID now. And then to let the UUID tech know your device UUID, you have to download the profile. We do not collect or share your personal information. So we press download here. The website is trying to download a configuration profile. Do you want to allow this? Then we press allow. Then it says profile downloaded, review the profile in the, the settings app if you want to install it. Then we need to go to the iOS settings, then tap the profile downloaded and install the temporary profile service. Then we need to type in the, yeah, the pin code here and press install. So now you have the UUID here on the screen. You just highlight it and copy it 
And within 24 hours sending your UUID to Drone Tricks, you would get an email from them confirming the further instructions how to download and install the app. So this email also contains um, some uh, Drone Trick credentials that is specific for the device where you have provided the UUID. And uh, of course, you need to keep those uh, confidential and not share them. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to install the app. We do that by pressing the link in the email and then the installation process will, will more or less take care of itself. You do need to be careful about all these commercials that are being plugged into this installer so you make sure that you install the right version. So what you want to go for is uh, the, uh, the, yeah, the point that's called install the latest app and that will install a version of 1.12.8 if I press install. So once I've said install, we should see an app somewhere here being installed and I have a ton of apps here. So let's just move this one to a location where we can <laughs> monitor the progress like this. So you can see now it's just waiting and it will start installing uh, shortly. After a bit of waiting, the installation process will start. Now the installation has been completed and you can see there are two apps now present, the official DJI Fly app and uh, the FCC version from Drone Tweaks both installed at the same time. Because we are running iOS 16 or higher, we need to enable developer mode to be able to run this application. But don't worry, it sounds a little bit complicated, all of it, but just follow the steps that I show you here and you only need to do this once. Once the app is installed, you can use it uh, freely afterwards and won't have to go through all this trouble all the time. And the way that we do that is that we need to go under settings and we need to scroll down to the section that's called privacy and security. And then we go to the bottom of that one. There's an option that's called developer mode. And that one is currently set to off. And we would have to switch that one to on. And when we switch it, it will come up and it will ask you to restart uh, your device. I don't know if that kills the screen recording. <laughs> and the phone automatically shuts off. So let's reboot it. And now when the phone boots, I can't start the screen recorder right now, you'll be prompted with this dialogue saying, turn on developer mode. Developer mode allows you to use features that are required for app development. When developer mode is turned on, your device security will be reduced. So I press turn on and then I'm typing in my password and then I can enable the screen recorder now. <laughs> so we can see what is going on. So now we're in here and we can launch uh, the FCC app from Drone Tweaks for the first time. And what will happen here is that the app will start exactly like uh, you, uh, I can turn around like this. The app will start exactly like you're used to and you are being asked to accept all the usual stuff when you launch uh, the application. We like to use Bluetooth, yes, 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 allow full access to library here, next, 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 and not now any developer program. So, so, so you can see when uh, the installation has been completed, you have an app that's exactly like the official TGI app. And you should also log into the app using your normal TGI credentials. So once you have done that, you should kill the app completely. And then when you launch the app for the second time, you will be prompted with a dialogue asking you to type in your drone tweak credentials, the ones that you got in the email from before. So if I type in those and make sure to pay attention to the caps, it will say log in successfully. Thank you for logging in. Your license will expire in 233 days. You can now restart the app and start using the app normally. So if I press restart here, it will relaunch the app. And uh, it's actually quite funny because this one can run in portrait mode. The default app can't do that. So right now, when every time that you launch it, you will be prompted with this dialogue, FCC mode enabled, fly with caution. By using this application, you acknowledge that you receive special permission to increase transmission power and assume full liability for any potential legal ramifications. So this is important that you understand this part because it's actually not legal to switch your drone into FCC mode in CE territories. So please consider information in this video as educational. So I just press OK 
and then you're basically ready to go. So every time you launch the DJI FCC app, the drone will basically be forced into FCC mode. If you're using the old RCN1 remote, where the phone goes on top of the remote. If you're going to use the DJI RC or RC2, there are different steps that needs to be performed to make the drone switch. And you would have to do those every time that you are out flying. And in case that you want to know more about how to do that, I made a video about that, that you can access through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you did like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.